Let's take a look now at hypothesis testing for means where sigma is known for a two-tailed alternative hypothesis. The steps for this hypothesis test are exactly the same as a one-tailed test, so notice I did not include that extra slide that had all of the steps. It's the same for all of these examples. So let's read the question and check conditions. As we're reading the question, as always, I'm going to write down the important information. A recent study showed that the mean number of children for women in Europe is 1.5. So mean is equal to 1.5, which also means the null hypothesis is that the mean is equal to 1.5. Continuing on, a global watch group claims that German women have a mean fertility rate that is different from the mean. So different from indicates that there's no direction. It means it could be a lot less than 1.5 or it could be a lot more than 1.5. And that's why this is called a two-tailed test because as we draw a picture in a little bit, we'll see that we're looking for how far to the right and how far to the left. So to test the claim, the group surveyed a simple random sample of 128 German women so n equals 128 and found they had a mean fertility rate of 1.4 children so that's our observed mean of 1.4 the population standard deviation is assumed to be 0.8 sigma equals 0.8 is there a significant or sufficient evidence to support the claim made by the global watch group at the 90 percent level of confidence again if they don't give us alpha, it's one minus the confidence level. And so one minus 0.9 gives me 0.1. So there's all of the information that I need. Now let's check conditions. Random sample, yes, it says a random sample. Sigma is known, yep, it's 0.8. And is n greater than or equal to 30? Yes, it's 128. Again, we have already stated the null and alternative hypotheses on the last slide when we talked about all of the important information, and that is that the null hypothesis is that it's 1.5, just like the rest of Europe, and the alternative hypothesis is that it's not 1.5. Now, before we look at the test statistics, let's talk about what a two-tailed test is. So typically what we do is we have a right-tailed test and we say, let's put all of alpha over here. Or we have a left-tailed test and we say, let's put all of alpha over here. Well, this is a two-tailed test. We're saying, how different is it from 1.5? Is it significantly different than 1.5? Which means I have to put half of, half of alpha here and half of alpha here. Okay, so that's going to make a little bit of a difference. Now, when we find our z-score, it's the same way that we found it before. And my z-score is negative 1.414 which let's say this is about one standard deviation so negative 1.414 is right here now when you're dealing with a two-tailed test what you're really thinking about is i'm going to have a value here and then i'm going to have the exact same value over here of 1.41 positive 1.414 so really i have one z score but i'm thinking about it on each side of my mean and we'll pay attention to whether it's left tail, I'm sorry, uh, negative or positive in terms of how we use Excel. The critical value, we're going to find the same way. I want you to notice that my critical value here, I've written as both positive and negative. In the same way that I'm looking at my z-score being negative and positive, I'm also looking at this value of negative 1.645 and this value of positive 1.645 being two critical values and again notice that that gives me two rejection regions so either the z-scores will both be in the rejection region or not and then for my p-value this is where students tend to get confused so let me break this down i know if i were finding my p-value of negative 1.414 that would include all of the area to the left of negative 1.4 and then if I did it to the right, it would include all of that area to the right. Notice that these two guys are the same. It's the same area because the normal model is symmetric. So notice it's okay for me to take two times 
and then whatever my sign is, if it's negative, I'm going to find the area to the left of the negative, and if it's positive, I'm going to find the area to the right of the positive. Um, and then just take it times two. Or if I wanted to be real crazy, I could say the probability that z is less than negative 1.414 plus the probability that z is greater than positive 1.414. But again, these two values are exactly the same. So that's why we just take it times two. I don't want you to get too stressed out about the math here because again, if you understand the basic concept, we can set up Excel to do all of that work for us. And now our conclusion, again, either from the rejection region, and if you remember from the last slide, those z-scores were not in the rejection region, which means fail to reject, or the p-value in this case, p, is greater than 0.1, and therefore we fail to reject. So the three parts of the conclusion are, here's the data with p greater than alpha, and then what's our conclusion? We fail to reject the null, and then what does it mean? That's important. So this means that at 90% level of confidence or 10% level of significance, whichever you prefer, the evidence does not support the watch group's claim that the fertility rate of German women is different from the mean for all of Europe. So again, if you're still confused on this part, we always talk about the alternative hypothesis. If we fail to reject, we're saying there's not enough evidence to say this is true. If we reject, we're saying there is enough evidence to say the alternative is true. Now, in terms of your confidence interval, again, we're still going to use the critical value that we used before. And in this one, it makes a lot more sense because alpha is 0.1, and we're actually creating a 90% interval because we've already split alpha in half. So that's where it gets a little confusing on the one-tailed test. On this test, we already said alpha over two, alpha over two. On the one-tailed test, we had to recreate alpha on the other side. So essentially, just use the same formula again, which is, of course, x bar plus or minus your critical value, which notice I already have the plus or minus on there. That's why the plus or minus is there. And then sigma divided by the square root of n. Our interval says 1.284 to 1.516. Again, when you talk about an interval, don't just say, yes, this supports our decision because what? We have to say, what does this interval mean? The interval tells us we're 90% confident the average fertility rate of women is between 1.28 children and 1.52 children. So always talk about the two values. Now, does it support my conclusion? Well, remember, I'm testing 1.5, and 1.5 is in there. So since the hypothesized value of 1.5 falls in the interval, this supports failing to reject the null hypothesis. Let's take a look now at how to use Excel to do all of this for us. If you'll notice, I'm using the exact same spreadsheet that I used for my one-tailed test, but I've added just a little bit. And here's what I've added. I've added a column for two-tailed, and I'm going to take you through all of that. And then I've added a row for the two-tailed interval. So before we do this, um, well, let's talk about the critical value, and then I really need to talk to you about the p-value because that's the part that gets confusing. So the critical value is just norm s inverse of one minus alpha over two. So let's look back at our picture. And remember, we said in a two-tailed test, we had alpha over two here and we had alpha over two here. So I could have just said, let's do norm s inverse of alpha over two, and that would be fine, except let's say alpha is 0 0.05. Notice it's going to give me that negative value. Well, for the sake of my interval, I really want that value to be positive. So that's why I chose to take one minus alpha over two, which is going to give me this one instead of this one. Notice the same value, different sign. Now, the p-value is where things get a little bit complicated because, again, I am an Excel dork and I love to use Excel to do everything for me without me having to do anything. If you're not an Excel dork, don't worry. You can just use your brain and figure out which one to use. And here's what I mean by that. 
if I have a z-score, if my z-score is negative, so if my z-score is negative, what I want to do is take that negative z-score and find the area to the left and then take it times two. So in Excel, I'm saying if, and then I said the z-score is negative, then I want the um, probability to the left of the z-score, sorry, probability less than z times two. If the z-score is positive, then I want the area to the right times two. So let's see how I did this in Excel because that's the part that I'm sure you're dying to know. If B7, which is my z-score, is less than zero, then I want it to take two times norm s dist of the negative z-score. So that's exactly what we said in words, and that's how we do it in Excel. If that's not the case, then I want to take Oh, I think I did this wrong. Then I want to take two times one minus norm s inverse. Again, why do I want to do that? Because I want the area to the right, which is the one minus, and then I want two of them. So let's plug in everything we just found out and see if what I did works. 1.5 for mu, 1.4 for x bar, 0 0.8, sample size 128, alpha was 0.1, and yes, this is the same z-score. My critical value was plus or minus 1.645, and notice I have a an awesome p-value of 0.1573, which is what I found previously. Also previously, I found my interval of 1.284 to 1.516, and that has happened again. Now, how did that happen? Because I kind of skipped over that part. I did it the same way I did the one-tailed, except I had to use a different critical value. So instead of F2, which is my critical value for one tail, times B3 divided by the square root of B4, I took that other critical value times B3 divided by the square root of B4. And notice, Everything matches up to what we found by hand. Up next, we will take a look at hypothesis testing for population means where sigma is unknown in a one-tailed test. So again, instead of a normal model, we're going to use a T model, and we're going to look at left and right-tailed tests.